so nice to have you. And I am delighted to greet the neighbors and to welcome you to It's Our Community. Today, most interesting is uh, David Yost, and David Yost is Executive Vice President and Personal Trust Manager of Midwest Trust, and he is Chair of the UMKC Athletic Foundation. David, welcome. Thank you, Mary. Just delighted to have you. Next to him is a very interesting lady. Her name is Carla Wilson. And Carla is the athletic director, much shorter title, but <laughs> not always so easy, the athletic director of the University of Missouri at Kansas City. And you have been permanently installed since December of 2013. Correct. Thank you. Well, I just am delighted because the whole subject of athletics comes up and comes up and comes up. And some of it's positive, some of it's not so positive, and maybe we'll just talk about both of those things. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> David, I want to know how did a trust officer get involved in the UMKC Foundation? Sure. It David started, handles uh, many, many things <laughs> at Midwest Trust. <laughs> I do. Yeah. It started with my involvement with the, the University of Missouri at Kansas City. Mm -hmm. I was on the Board of Trustees. Mm -hmm. And the Board of Trustees has a person usually uh, as, a, as a representative with the Athletic Foundation. And I uh, was interested in UMKC Athletics. Their first year in Division I Athletics was my last year in law school at UMKC. And with my interest in athletics, they put me on the, the foundation. And through the years, through my involvement, I eventually became the chairman of the, the Athletic Foundation. And what, what do you do? I, I don't know, what does the chairman, ex what's expected of you, let's put it that well, way. Well, our primary role and responsibility is just to raise, raise funds and awareness of the athletic programs at UMKC. So, public relations and development. You bet. So, there we are. Well, you know, um, I would venture to say that in all schools, the Athletic Foundation is not run quite the same because in those big schools where money just kind of flows in, it, they're very um, protective of their funds and don't, don't um, cross-pollinate with the university too much. And I would guess that that's not exactly true at UMKC. We're a little bit better partner than that. <coughs> Excuse me. We, we like to, uh, we've actually turned our money over to the foundation. UMKC is trying to get all their money into one foundation. Now our funds are segregated, so we have different uses for it. But as you can imagine, it's a little bit more of a challenge for us to raise funds. We're not a big SEC school. We don't get the funds that are allocated to us through the conferences going to BCS bowl games or things like that. We have to, we have to work a little bit harder to get funds from our donors kind of money do you do you raise or sh do you want to raise or do you raise on an annual basis? David? Well, for example, this year we're, we're raising monies to help offset some of our increased travel expenses. Mm -hmm. We've just moved to a new conference. We're in the WAC now, the Western Athletic Conference, and uh -huh. with that move, uh, it, it's good news for us. We, we, uh, we're going to have a, a we have increased travel costs. That's that, the, that's a little bit of a challenge for us. But the good news is our student athletes get to spend more time in the classroom because we're traveling by airplane and instead of taking bus rides up to Fargo, North Dakota. We get to hop in a plane and fly out to <laughs> Seattle. Well, and we're talking, I just want to talk about the numbers of sports that we're talking about. We're sure. talking about men's basketball, cross country, golf, men's soccer, men's tennis track and field, women's basketball, cross country, women's golf, women's soccer, softball, tennis, women's track and field, I mean <laughs> volleyball. That's a lot of stuff to raise money and a lot of people to transport. Now, I want to go back, Carla, and pull out a little thread that David said. He said, by raising money for transportation, we can ensure that the athletes spend more time in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, definitely the help with the operating cost of the team travel, which is uh, more, as, as David stated, because we're traveling further distances. But the fact that they can be on an airplane, um, you know, will get them to their destination quicker and those kinds of things. So that's very important to us to we look at the student athlete welfare and how long they would be on the road in a bus or a van possibly, you know, with 16 sports, you know, everyone doesn't travel the same way I when know. you're, you know, so that's really student athlete um, welfare is very important to us. So we want to make sure well, that's protected. It is. And being in the classroom is very important mm -hmm. Absolutely. because after all, they are there to get an education. I want to, I don't know who said this, but I read it. 
and I want to, it says you're all champions in your own way. That doesn't mean you have to be number one or to be the best. Just do your best. If you aren't first, then make those people ahead of you break records by pushing them with your personal best. Consider for a moment what we achieve from athletics. The sheer fun of competing, the building of a healthy and alert mind and body, stamina, courage, perseverance, dedication, commitment, selflessness, and most important, the will to excel. Now to me, that's why I like UMKC, because I think the athletic department, I'm putting words in your mouth in case you didn't know this here, <laughs> but I think that that sort of summarizes where you're coming from, to me anyway. Absolutely. Very important to have well-rounded um, student athletes and you know it starts in the classroom so academics is first and foremost they're a student first that's why it says student athlete and if they don't take care of business in the classroom they won't be on the playing fields anyway because they won't because of the standards the NCAA has put in and the progress towards degree that they have to make if they're not doing those things they won't be there anyway so I from the first recruiting visit um, the first thing I say to them is I want to watch you walk across that stage so that's very important graduation even if I have to drag you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I'm going to level an accusation at you. Carla is an accountant. Her degree is in accounting. She is not a basketball player, a football, pl football player, hi, Bob, uh, a tennis player. I mean, she, you know, you may be interested in sports, but mm -hmm. you are not um, so inclined for the, your whole life. So does that have anything to do with, and you started your career in the business department at UMKC, yes. not in the sports department. Mm -hmm. Does that have anything to do with your attitude and outlook towards the student, student athletes, do you think? Um, I, I think it all matters. To me, um, I was in high school and growing up I played sports and my parents were very adamant about education and so to me, um, being a mother, having a child that played sports, you know, in college, and just, just seeing the balance, and it's just very important, and I think the numbers, because being an accountant, I'm always looking at the numbers, so whether it's GPAs or graduation rates, you know, numbers pop in my mind, and I want to make sure that we're always on the highest end of those. Well, uh, one of the quotes that I uh, grabbed from you was that you said that you, the relationships that I have built with Chancellor Morton, faculty, staff, alumni, coaches, student athletes, and Kangaroos fans will be the key in the next level of success. Um, what do you think about that, what she has done and how she's gone about it, David? Well, I think she, her quote's uh, dead on. She has a wonderful relationship not only with Chancellor Morton but within the uh, with the rest of the staff at the university and with the student athletes that she, I don't want to say beloved, but the, the <laughs> people were thrilled. The student athletes were, were thrilled. The staff was thrilled and also the donors. My, my group on the foundation, we were all thrilled when Carla was, uh, the interim tag was removed. Mm -hmm. And it's very important, mm -hmm. you know, the commitment of the university to dedicate more resources because it's going to be critical to the success of the MKC athletics. Well, which pushes me to the next question, what is the next level of success that you wish to achieve for the athletes? What, what do you want that to be? Well, again, I want it to be well-rounded. I want, um, academically, I want all of our teams above a 3.0 GPA. Our cumulative GPA right now is 3.23. And um, 15 out of 16 of our teams were above a 3.0, have a cumulative GPA above a 3.0. But I want that to be 16 out of 16. So mm -hmm. that's first and foremost. Athletically, I just want them to have um, a well-rounded experience. So athletically, I want them, <clears throat> again, it's not about necessarily coming in first all the time, but do, knowing that you put your best and as, as much as you could and you left it all on the playing fields to do the best that you, you can. Now, and I'm competitive and I'd want us to end in the top third in all of our sports, but um, I know that doesn't always happen, but as long as we're pushing to get better and better every year, that will be important. Well, do you believe that the philosophy for the athletic director in this urban university we call the University of Missouri mm -hmm. at Kansas mm -hmm. City is somewhat different than the athletic director uh, that looks at the Tigers in Columbia. 
Yes, I think there's, there's, you know, the SEC and the Western Athletic Conference, you know, are, are different. They have football. We don't have football. Football is a very driving force in a lot of, you know, schools and BCS schools and that kind of thing. And um, so I definitely think that some of our goals can, can be different or, you know, on a different level. Um, and I think for me being from going to, with UMKC being my alma mater and me having spent 25 plus years on the UMKC campus. You don't campus. have to say how many. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I was hoping that you would say I look young and that I must have started when I was two. That was the hope. <laughs> but with having spent that much time there and the relationships I have built on campus with the different entities, you know, it's just really important to me and, and I'm loyal to the, my university. I want to make sure that our kids have the same type of experience that I had. Well, and I have to say I worked for a number of years for a large um, university that was big into sports and the sports department the athletic department is they don't they don't really want to mix with the schools and the other thing that is of interest David is that the contributions to a university like that are directly proportional to how the basketball team and the football team are doing absolutely do you find that true as at the foundation at, at UMKC no, we, we don't. It, it's still, we're in our infancy as a foundation, athletic foundation, really. Uh, our contributions are, are, they are tied to success, and we haven't had the success we need to, especially, you know, our marquee mm -hmm. sport is men's basketball, mm -hmm. and we have a wonderful new coach named Kareem Richardson who came from the University of Louisville, where they just came off a national championship last year. So we know that we need to have success with the men's basketball, and that will lead to more donations from our uh, uh, outside donors. But... You know, that, that will come. and uh, Well, it will, and I think that when the expectations are um, not so intense to achieve in sports, and the expectations are achievement academically, mm -hmm. that people who are interested in, a, one, an urban university, two, um, in the athletics because it's, it's really nice and you know we're talking about building a healthy and alert mind and body here and not always being number one um, you know the comp to compete is a good thing mm -hmm. you know one of the things that, that we want athletics to do as well is to increase the, the the student experience at our campus for years UMKC was somewhat of a commuter school and with the with the uh, dorms that we have built on campus mm -hmm with the athletic programs, the kids get to go to the events, they have a different experience. And with this different experience that they can have at UMKC now, we would think they'll have more, a more engaged students, more engaged donor base, and with that, then we won't be as dependent on athletic success. They'll just have a better UMKC undergraduate experience, and the, and the donations will increase in that A multifaceted regard. experience Absolutely. with yes. many options and opportunities available yes. to these students. Yes. See, that's, that's, that's to me what's important. And I would like to expand on that as well, um, because that third key is the involvement, integration on campus and in the community. And um, like you said, a well-rounded experience so they don't come away one-sided or think if they didn't achieve the success they wanted in athletics that they failed in life. That is not the case. And it's really important for, like I said, for our student athletes to be integrated in, on campus so, you know, they, most of them live on campus. Um, you know, our basketball players and our volleyball players and just mul multiple student athletes live on campus because if we want them to be a part of what we're doing, we also need to be a part of what other students are doing on campus as well. And the yeah. same thing in the community. Well, and that's true. Um, but I, I just think it's a really more um, welcoming atmosphere, a more, um, a, 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 I hate to use the word safer, but, but I think you're more watchful of the student athletes than you might be. And I would say it's more of a, yeah, motherly instincts and making sure. You mean that if you don't make grades, things. I'll kill you? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I've used those words. Maybe we didn't say kill, but I have. Hit you with something heavy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it was really interesting to me. Um, less than 9% of Division I athletic directors are women. That's number one. Less than 4% are minority women. 
and you are the only African American woman athletics director in a Division I school, not at a historically black college or university. Now, how did this happen to you? I, d I do think it's about the relationships I built um, on campus and in the community and with students and, and the student athletes and the coaches that they see that I really care and I have their best interests at heart. And I think that everyone um, on our campus thinks that I really, really am going to make sure that, you know, academics is first, you know, athletics is important, community involvement is so important. And the main thing is that I want them to come, come away prepared for life, you know. I want them to be ready to go out into the real world and be able to, um, you know, go into their career and want to give back to UMKC, want to have that experience, want to give back to their community, want to stay in the community. And so I think those things that, um, they naturally come out, people see those in me, that that's what I want and they embrace that. See the whole point that I'm trying to make here is that gender and color don't really make a difference. It's your philosophy, how you put it forward, mm -hmm. how you, um, uh, philosophy is one thing, but to be able to put it into practice mm -hmm. is another. And yeah. I think that um, that's important and I, and I think that's what you do and try to do. Thank but you. the question nags at me, how do your colleagues uh, as athletic directors? Um, I have had lots of support and I think it's because um, again they have seen me throughout the business in the last 16 years. I have worked on NCAA committees. I was a part of the NCAA fellows program which was an 18 month program to kind of groom minorities and women to um, it, advance in the athletics field at senior level management or to an athletics director chair. And so I've met a lot of people. I've had lots of good mentors. Um, Bob Bowlesby, who at the time was the athletic director at Stanford, who is the commissioner of the Big 12. You know, I was directly paired up with certain people and they introduced me to people. And so, and then once you get to talking to people and they understand your philosophy or they hear what you have to say and they make a decision based on that. And I think so far it's been favorable. Well, I, I'm going to say this because I know you won't but I think that gender and color tend to disappear uh, and um, um, when good management um, in the job and effective and efficient um, results are shown. I, I think that yeah. kind of goes away. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I do. Um, David, I know that Carla's involved in a lot of national things mm -hmm. other than um, transporting athletes and making them good student <laughs> scholars and that kind of thing. Nationally, she's, she's involved. She's, um, um, she's there. She's out front. Does the, the foundation encourage that? Oh, you bet. Uh, Carla's, Carla's done a wonderful job. And, and I'll tell you this, uh, we had the great support of a chancellor and an athletic di director prior to uh, Leo Morton and Carla, who mm -hmm. set the stage for the athletic department to be where it is now. And Thankfully, Leo and, and Carla are taking the next steps with the athletic department, and I think we're, we're in a position to, to make great gains in the next few years. I think, I have to say that I think Leo Morton has brought a great deal to UMKC. Absolutely. Absolutely. I really do. Absolutely. Um, I think that um, <laughs> you have budgets for 16 sports. I mean, that makes one's headache. How, how, do, you, how do you decide? How do you... Uh, because, you know, uh, being a state institution, you have to project those budgets a year in advance. Yeah. Is that, that is your job, yes? Yes, that is, um, it was, oh, hopefully I will get to come in more on the back end of that and uh, then the <laughs> front, I've been in the weeds <laughs> yeah. of it for yes. so long, but yeah. um, definitely, and, and it's hard, but it's also easy. I mean, you look at proportion, you know, proportionality, how many students do we have in that sport, you know? A bed is a bed. If you have 10 students in this sport, their team travel budget should reflect 10 people. And if there's 30 over here, how it's many extra reflect. long beds you need <laughs> <for> basketball players? <laughs> yes, and how many to a room, depending on yeah. size and those yeah. kinds of things. But, um, you know, gender equity is very important. Um, and the NCAA, you know, it holds us accountable to that. So we have to make sure that our women's sports and our men's sports are. Treat, treat it comparably. Well, you know, it's really interesting because I worked for a large uh, institution for a while, and Title IX in many of these higher ed institutions is a, <laughs> they don't want to talk about it. 
and I know that one um, put a rowing program on where there isn't any river. Uh, so, you know, um, those are interesting in, in the way they, but you don't seem to be bothered by Title IX. I'm not, because I know um, at our school, I feel we're doing things the right way, and so we're not going to cut, you know, a sport just to, to you know, to make it, um, you know, to have the women be in a better light or a worse light, you know, we're not going to do that. We're really going to think about what can we do. We don't want to have to, you know, c cut a sport, any of our student athletes. So what can we do? What is a different way around it? And just making sure that we really are treating our student athletes the same is really important to us. And so well, that I, makes it easier. I noticed in, in one of your um, blurbs that I read that you participate at decision making at the institutional level mm -hmm. at UMKC. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that's odd, different? Do most athletic directors participate along with the department chairs and the deans and well, wherever it is you enter the circle? I well, as a part of Title IX, something the NCAA did years ago was put in a senior woman administrator. And that senior woman administrator was the highest ranking female that was involved in the decision making of the athletics department. Because they, it, at one time, it was very top heavy with men making all the decisions. And so that was the way to uh, make sure that you had someone at the table that was looking out for the interests of female student athletes and you know their interests as well as males, but just making sure that there was a balance. And so, um, you know, I often find myself you know, the only woman, you know, the Western Athletic Conference, I'm the only female athletics director, and, you know, as you said earlier, the only African-American woman that's not It does make you stick out a little bit, you know. Just a little bit. So I try to take <laughs> advantage of those opportunities. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. That's right. Do you have to know things about all these sports to do your job? I mean, I, you know, I... Like that's all 16 sports. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of stuff to cram up there. It? Well, there's the programs with 32 sports and even I know. more so. I'd be glad you only have 16. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Do I know every inside? No. But do I know uh, the basics of definitely of what most of the sports do? Absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty, and I educate myself, and I make sure that I am supporting them and at their contests. And so... Um, what I didn't know, I get to understand more and more by being around them, spending time with them, and, and watching them compete. Well, I would also have to submit to you that one of the reasons that you have been integrated into the university is because you started there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. You were associated with a department in the university, mm -hmm. so you didn't, they knew you. Yes. And I, I think that's important. Yes. I do. David, um, when you are, you, you talk to people about raising money, mm -hmm. and you have to know something about these sports, too. I do, yeah. and, and I enjoy following the sports. Mm -hmm. it's a, as I mentioned, the, they started on their Division One journey when my last year at, at law school down at UMKC, and, and it's been fun for me. You get to know some of the young student athletes, and they're some of the most impressive kids you'll meet. Uh, we have a, a young lady in the basketball program who, who is attracted to coming to UMKC because of our dental program. And, mm -hmm. and the day Carla was announced as athletic director, she found out she was getting into our dental school. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's Excellent. just a fabulous young Now young your teeth person. can go <laughs> bad because you've got somebody who can have your teeth fixed now. Yeah. But you get to meet yeah. kids like that. You yeah. follow the programs, and it's just a, a, it's exciting to be on this level of, a, of, of the program and getting to know the kids and getting to, getting to follow the sports. Well, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press one step farther, and I'm going to say that the athletes are not isolated like they are in some schools. They mm -hmm. are part of the fabric uh, of the school, and, and you, as chair of the foundation, kind of oversee that, I would think. Well, I get to interact a lot more yeah. than, I, than I think other uh, foundation directors mm -hmm. would. I think Just, so, too. And, and it's fun. I, I would tell you, my daughter's a freshman down there this year, and on the first day of school when we were moving her into the dorm, all the student athletes are out helping move the kids into their dorm rooms. You know, Carla has done a good job of making sure that, that the student athletes are out and getting involved and just, you know, one, it's trying to help raise awareness of the, mm -hmm. the different events and the different things that are going on in campus. And it's also just getting the kids in, ingrained with the other students on campus. Being part campus. of the fabric of the school is really critical. Absolutely. And that to me is, sums up the whole 
uh, approach and the attitude of the athletic program at UMKC. Mm -hmm. They need to be scholars and they need to be part of the fabric of the school and not just y used to play basketball mm -hmm. or football or soccer or whatever it is. Yeah, they so don't have their own dorm rooms. They don't no, have their own see, floor. No. Mm -hmm. They live with others, and, and that's truly important. Wh which sport is the most difficult to raise money for? Or do you raise for particular sports? Or how do you do that? You raise for in general? We raise in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's easier, I yeah. would think. You know, and we have different projects at different times. For example, you know, we raise money for a track facility that we share with St. Teresa's down there around Maine. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, right now, we're trying to raise money for munis municipal, which is where the men's team recently moved their games back downtown. Uh, the municipal auditorium. You yes. bet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and it's you know probably the most historic building that's, uh, that we've ever played basketball mm -hmm. in. There's mm -hmm. been more Final Four games there than anywhere else. And uh, you know the men are back down there. We're trying to do some. Uh, uh, the city's done a wonderful job in rehabbing it and putting new video boards and new seats down there. But there's still some other things we need to do. And so that's what we're trying to raise money for right now. Your job never ends, no, and I and I did have to comment on your kangaroo's tie. Today. Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful, <laughs> and uh, the ruse pin. I mean, you know, we're all advertisements for that which we do and that which in which we are interested. Mm -hmm. But I would have to say, you have a fantastically interesting job and an odd mm -hmm. path to start. <laughs> 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 so I, I did. But see, to me, that's what life is all about plucking people out that have something to give and to offer and the two of you uh, work as a team yes mm -hmm. see and that is mm -hmm. extremely yeah. important yeah. so you got to get out there and raise money and you got to get those kids doing what they need to do so I, I just I think that's so interesting but I, I have to say that um, Carla Wilson as athletic director at UMKC it has really been fun <laughs> And I, I love to see, first of all, smart women, and mm -hmm. I love to see smart women succeed, and I love to see them be so good they lose their gender. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I think that is where we're all headed. Thank you. It's yeah. excellence uh, that really counts. Yes. And David, I know that you are extremely busy at work, <laughs> so I also know that the time that you give to UMKC is time that you enjoy giving or you couldn't and wouldn't do it. Um, so, and I think both of you um, have ties to the, to the university and that's important as well. So, um, to me, I, I think uh, that one of the greatest lessons to be learned in athletics is that we all have to discipline our lives. Athletes do. Mm -hmm. People who are busy do. So it's it's mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a universal truism that discipline in one's life is important. And no matter how good we may be, we've got to be willing to cut out those things that keep us from doing that which we find of interest and things that we really want to do. So UMKC, all the best Thank to you. the Thank ladies you. and gentlemen who participate. And David. A good year in development, I Absolutely. wish you. Thank you, <laughs> And thank, thank you. you. Isn't it interesting, the people that are our neighbors? And both of these lovely people are our neighbors here in Johnson County. So thank you so much, and thank you. It is, after all, our community. Thanks for coming, and I'll see you soon again.